Hello and welcome back to our Lord of the Rings LCG solo progression series. And today's quest is the Massing Atos Gileath, which is the first uh, standalone scenario in the game. And so real quick, what a standalone scenario is or was is FFG every year at major events, usually at Gen Con, would have a Lord of the Rings LCG event for fans. And if you uh, registered for that and you made the event, if you were able to get in, uh, you would then be able to play this brand new quest that was released at this event and it was called the Mass at Us Gileath for Gen Con 2011. And uh, so you'd be playing this quest that nobody had ever played with uh, play, uh, fans of the game. And so what you would you would also get one as a prize and uh, there were no player cards included. It was just the quest. There were alternate art heroes included as a prize for the event and that's the only way you could get those. You might have seen those going for really high prices on eBay. Um, but, uh, so th that was the only way you could get massing at, at, at the, Esgil the massing at Esgiliath at the time. But then months later, FFG would then print, uh, using their print on demand feature. You could purchase the quest from their website without getting the alternate art heroes. Those were only available at, with the limited number that was released at the uh, event. But I really like these standalones because, uh, the, cards in them, uh, the art and the names and the interactions is all specific to this quest. It's truly a standalone scenario. So you're not borrowing encounter sets from a core or a deluxe. And so I really enjoy that. Um, so just a quick reminder, this is a solo progression series. And so in this series, we're playing through each quest in chronological order of the game's initial release. And we'll only be using player cards that were available at the time of this quest release. And so we can use cards through a journey to Rosgabel, which is definitely a limited co player card pull for such a hard quest. I'm calling this deck Mass Murderers because uh, that's the extent of my imagination. And um, we're just hoping that we do well. This is a hard quest, and so things can go south really quickly. But I've tuned this deck as best I can. Frodo is a spirit hero that came out in Conflict of the Carrack. He's really great. He has a threat of seven, two willpower, two, one attack, two defense, two hit points, and he has this response. After Frodo Baggins is damaged, cancel the damage and instead raise your threat by the amount of damage he would have been dealt. So if he was attacked for 10 and he defends for two, that's going to be eight damage. Well, he could actually convert that to threat. He'd survive, but at the, it's sort of like he's using the ring to hide from, uh, you know, the current and present danger, but at the price of your threat going up. So really cool thematically, and he's a great hero, especially in combat decks, which this quest is certainly combat. Let's get to the quest and see how we do. All right, so the opening hand I don't like because I don't want to play early feints, and so yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna mulligan. I still have all these tactics events which I don't want to play early. Not a great opening hand. Okay, beyond expectations, there are reports of increased orc activity around Athelion and you have been sent to investigate. You enter Osgiliath and cross the river. On the outskirts of the city, you see a horde that surpasses all expectations coming down the Morgul Road. Set up, we search the encounter deck for 12 scout cards and add three per player to the stationary. It has to be one of each title. So we grab a Wayne Riders, we grab a Wolves from Mordor, and a Snaga Scout. So if you're playing four player, all 12 of these would be added to the staging, but one per title, so three total in solo. Then you remove the Witch King from the encounter deck and set him aside out of play. Here he is, really cool art. 40 engagement, I love his stat line, 666, that's cool. And then you shuffle any unused scout cards back into the encounter deck. So all these scouts are shuffled back into the encounter deck. And now we move on to 1B, 7 Progress. As the van of the army enters the city, some of the horde's outriders are aware of your presence and head in your direction. Drawing back, you make a hasty retreat towards the river. Players cannot travel to West Bank locations. So there are East Bank and there are West Bank locations. So if, uh, if it says you can't travel to West Bank, you can't travel to West Bank, but you can to East and vice versa. So let's go to the resource phase. Boy, this is probably the worst opening hand I could have. <laughs> oh well, we'll quest with just uh, Eowyn and we reveal 
There we go. So there was some luck to counterbalance our opening hand. Ranger of Athelion, which there are two of these in the uh, in the quest, and you need them to, to move on. So part of why we're going to generally uh, turtle at stage one is we want to get a Ranger of Athelion. There's two ways to get one. This way, when revealed, the first player takes control of Ranger of Athelion. Exhausted and committed to the quest, then Ranger of Athelion gains Surge. Alternately, he might be dealt as a shadow card. If he is, it says deal two damage to attacking enemy. The defending player may exhaust a character he controls to take control of Ranger of Athelion. And so um, later on, to actually get past a quest stage, we have to obviously quest, but to commit characters to a quest, you have to either discard a Ranger of Athelion or a hero. So you want to get a Ranger of Athelion. So we get him. He's exhausted and committed to the quest, and then he surges into Wayne Rider Captain, which I love to see at this point in the game because it says, when revealed, move the top scout enemy from the encounter discard pile to the staging area. Top two scout enemies instead of the players have crossed the Anduin. So this is definitely a good target for a test of will. But for now, no harm, no foul. Our, uh, you know, There's nobody in the discard pile. So to boost Eowyn, I'm going to discard Bayorn. And so she's boosted using her action. And so our threat did not increase at all. Nowhere to travel. At the beginning of the encounter phase, there's this little notice that's telling us there's an effect somewhere in play. Snaga Scouts forced. At the beginning of the encounter phase, all copies of Snaga Scouts engage the player with the lowest threat. That makes a difference in multi, but not in solo. So really, he's just going to engage us normally almost. Okay. Uh, during the in encounter phase, I'm not going to optionally engage I, either one of these enemies, but uh, I can't keep from engaging Wolves of Mordor. My threat is 27. Okay, so now I'm going to take this attack undefended from Wolves from Mordor. And he does not have a boost. That's good. That's a, so we're having some luck here. That's going to be four damage. If it was boosted, I would put it on Frodo. But because he's not, I can put the four damage onto Gimli and max him out at the four damage that he can currently have. He gets plus one for each damage token on him, so he's attacking for six now. So, so far, so good. Okay, Frodo is going to take an undefended from Snaga Scouts, I think. Actually, let's just defend with Frodo against Snaga Scouts. Actually, I will take an undefended. There is, uh, see this right here, deal two damage to the defending character. If I exhaust Frodo, you know, obviously he'd block Snaga Scouts, but then he'd have to take the two damage. I'm just going to take it undefended. Okay, remove all defending characters from combat. This attack is considered undefended. It would have had to be anyway. So Frodo is, you know, there wasn't a defending character anyway. So one damage, which I'll turn into threat using Frodo's response. Frodo will attack and uh, damage Snaga Scouts, and then Gimli will destroy Wolves from Mordor. Discard Shadow Cards, refresh next round. Okay, good timing here on this Born Aloft. Okay, so I want to keep probably resources on Spirit initially. So one, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to play Gandalf from my hand and draw three cards. Okay, this is going well. And I'm going to, during the planning phase, I'm going to put out this card, Born Aloft, as an attachment, which I will attach to Gandalf, attach to an ally, discard Born Aloft from play to return attached ally to its owner's hand. So at the end of the round, during the refresh action window, I will discard that and Gandalf comes back into my hand. Okay, so we have four or five threat in staging. I definitely want to quest with Eowyn. And then I will also quest with Frodo. I don't want to make a lot of progress. I'd rather my threat go up than make progress because I need to turtle here for a little while. Because the next stage, you're limited to only playing one card per round. Okay, we reveal Pelennor Fields, and so perfect questing there. If you've crossed the Anduin, which we've not, when faced with the option to travel, the players must either travel to Pelennor Fields or raise your threat by three. Since we've not crossed the Anduin, we don't have to do that, and we can't travel to West Bank location, so it's going to stay in staging. Okay, since we have Gandalf in play, let's optionally engage Wayne Riders and we'll defend Wayne Rider's attack with Gandalf. So three against four. Defending player must discard one ally card from his hand or attack an enemy gets plus three. If he gets plus three, it doesn't 
matter too much? Well, our threat would go up, but we don't care. So three plus three is going to be six against four. That's two damage on Gandalf. This uh, effect says each damage dealt by Wayne Riders raises the defending player's threat by one. So my threat went up by two. I, I'm not, I'd rather not discard Northern Tracker right now because it may, might take me a while to get stand and fight into play. Okay, uh, so to cancel that, I would have had to discard Northern Tracker. Just don't want to do it. Okay, so now Snaga Scouts is going to attack for one, and I will take it undefended and put that damage onto Frodo and convert it to threat using his response. Now Gimli will attack and destroy Wayne Riders, and now Ranger Vathilion will attack and destroy Snaga Scouts. Refresh. During the refresh action window, I'll discard Born Aloft as an action, discard it to uh, return attached ally to its owner's hand. Gandalf comes back to our hand. Next round. Okay, we have two Gandalfs. I'm glad I have a sneak attack because I hate cutoffs so much. So I can't play Gandalf this round anyway. Um, I'm just going to quest with uh, Eowyn and... I think I'll stop there. Yeah, we'll reveal Uruk Vanguard. My threat goes up by two unless I discard a card. I don't want to. I'll just let my threat go up by two. Okay, can't travel here to Pelennor Fields. I could, if I wanted to, go ahead and optionally engage an enemy, which I think it's worthwhile to do that. I could attack for six, seven, eight. I could kill Wayne Rider Champion. However... If I wait, it just helps me to sort of, let me think, my threat's going to go up, but well, I need to start dealing with these guys one at a time. So he's going to be optionally engaged. He's going to attack for three. Now, I don't want to exhaust Frodo to, to uh, take the attack because if it's Wolves from Mordor, I can't cancel it. He'll be damaged. I'll use his response. And turn, and that'd be the once per phase, and then he's just going to be killed. So I don't want to defend with Frodo. I'm just going to take it undefended. Remove all defending characters from combat. This attack is considered undefended. So three damage, which we'll put on Frodo and convert to threat. And now we can attack and easily kill uh, Wayne Rider Champion between Wayne R uh, Ranger of Ithilien and Gimli. Okay, refresh. Next round. Okay, there's a hasty stroke. I like to have one. I like that we have a test of will. Things are going well. I don't necessarily feel the need to play Gandalf yet. I think I'd rather... Let's go ahead and put out Northern Tracker. We can start chipping away at Pelennor Fields. Okay, we're going to quest with Northern Tracker when he exhausts. Put a progress on Pelennor Fields. And then I'll also quest with Frodo. Actually, no. Let's see. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, with Frodo. Okay, we reveal Snaga Scouts. If I want to keep my threat from going up by one, I would discard a card, and I'm not going to. I'll just let my threat go up. Okay, we're at 40. Can't travel here. I'm going to leave Uruk Vanguard right where he is. Snaga Scouts will engage us. And um, I'm just going to... I'm tempted to block the attack with Eowyn. Because the worst thing that could happen... Well, she could have that damage. Hmm. We'll take it undefended. Remove all defending characters from combat. This attack is considered undefended. So one attack... Uh, one damage we'll have to place on a hero. We'll put it on Frodo, turn it into threat, and easily destroy him. Refresh. Next round. Um, this is kind of what I don't want to happen. Oh, yeah, we should have, whenever uh, Northern Tracker quested last round, he should have pro put a progress on Pelennor Fields. I believe that that's true. Committed. Where's Northern Tracker? 
uncommitted. No, I already, already did. Yeah, last round it was his first time in play. All right. I, I could play Gandalf and draw three cards and just get more going here. I need to get to Steward of Gondor. I need to get to Song of Kings. I'm kind of stalling out here. I think it's worth doing. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to leave a resource on Frodo. We'll bring Gan up into play and draw three cards. Okay, we'll also, during the planning phase, put Born Aloft on Gandalf, so we haven't lost that Gandalf. That's good. We'll quest with Northern Tracker and put a progress on Pelennor Fields. And we will quest with Frodo. And that's it for now. We'll reveal Cutoff, Doomed 1, Ring Revealed. Each player must discard all ally cards from his hand if able. That would mean I would have to discard Gandalf. So if I want to, I can play this Test of Will. I do have a resource on Frodo. Uh, but as long as I... I don't think I've had a Gandalf leave play. So I'm just going to lose this Gandalf. That's fine. And so we made no progress. And let's go ahead and deal with his Uruk Vanguard. He's going to engage us optionally. He's going to attack for two. Let's defend with Gandalf. So two attack. Deal two damage to the, to the defending character, and then he attacks for two, and so Gandalf successfully blocks six, seven, eight, and nine. We can kill Uruk Vanguard. Refresh at the end of the refresh, or during the refresh action window, we'll discard Born Aloft. Gandalf comes back to our hand next round. Okay, so we're definitely doing our turtling here. No reason to put out this Ancient Mathem yet, because it's going to take a while to clear Pelennor Fields. So threat is a slight issue here. I know we've been drawing cards. We're at 32 now left in the deck with Gandalf, but at some point we might want to lower our threat. I have stand and fight. Is uh, stand and fight okay? So eventually, I really want to start getting towards getting Bayorn into play. That's really the key. If Bayorn's in play, we can block attacks from enemies without using Frodo's response constantly. So I'm going to save up resources. We're at three. It'll take a couple of rounds, but um, the only other option is if I wanted to... Well, I can't afford Gandalf anyway. Yeah. Nothing for it. We're just going to quest with Northern Tracker and put a progress on Pelennor Fields, and then I'll quest with Frodo. And we reveal... Wolves from Mortar, we made one progress. Wolves from Mortar will engage us. And he's attacking for four. If I had, if I take this undefended, that's going to be a lot of damage on Frodo. And I already have a range of Athelians, so what I'm going to do is just play Faint. So that he cannot attack us. I'm hoping it's not a range of Athelians. It's not. Okay, so I will attack now and destroy Wolves from Mordor. Refresh. Now later on, like that's why Bayorn needs to be in play, because once he is, we can uh, more easily deal with these enemies. Hopefully this round we just get another location. We're, we're tired of enemies. Let's see what kind of enemies we have in the discard pile. Uh, three of the four Wolves from Mordor, two of the four Wayne Riders, and two of the Snaga Scouts. So yeah, we've we've got a lot of enemies, and there should be more locations coming. Okay, I'm going to save these resources, because the goal is for me to play Bayorn next round. And I could, if I need to, play another feint this round, so we're good. Let's just quest with uh, Northern Tracker and put a progress on Pelennor Fields, and also with, with Frodo. We just don't want to make progress, so that's why I'm not sending the AON right now. Dark Pursuit, when revealed, raise the total threat of the staging area by one. For each scout enemy in play, there aren't any, so it gains Surge. And, okay, there we go. Ruins of Osgiliath. I figured I'd see one of these. It's East Bank. If the players have not crossed the Anduin, Ruins of Osgiliath gets plus three. So our threat goes up by two, and we can't, you know, pitch a card using Eowyn because she's not questing. So two threat increase. Let's travel to Ruins of Osgiliath. 
and we'll refresh next round. Okay, we want to play Ancient Mathem onto Ruins of Usgiliath. And I'm not going to put Bayorn into play quite yet because I can always play Sand and Fight during the combat or whatever. I just need to bring him into play when it's helpful. But I can currently. That's good. Okay, we're going to quest with Eowyn and Northern Tracker, put in the progress on Pelennor Fields, and that's where we'll just stop there. We reveal Dark Pursuit. This is going to surge into Uruk Vanguard. So we made two progress just enough to clear Ruins of Osgiliath, and we draw three cards. Okay, there's Stuart of Gondor. We just need a Song of Kings. Usually when I'm mulligan, I'm hoping for a Song of Kings. Okay, so we can't travel here. Uh, Uruk Vanguard will engage us, and he's attacking for two. We're just going to defend with Frodo, and we can cancel this card if we need to. No, we don't need to. Yeah, let's do that, because if I play Bayorn and there's that card that says treat this attack as undefended, so yeah, I'm just going to try to defend with Frodo. And if, if it's a bad shadow, I can cancel it with this hasty stroke. So two against two. If this attack is undefended, attack enemy gets plus two. Okay, so Frodo just successfully blocked that. Six, seven, eight. Not enough to take out Org Vanguard. We'll put seven damage on him. Discard shadows. Refresh. Next round. Okay, our threat's at 48. It's going to be necessary for us to bring Ganoff into play pretty soon. We could play Bayorn. I think it might be good to bring Ganoff in and lower our threat, and then he's in play in case some nasty enemy comes out. So one, two, three, four, five. I want to save resources so I can get a Citadel played out if necessary. Let's lower our threat by five. Okay, we're going to quest with Northern Tracker, put in the progress on Pelennor Fields. And I think we'll also quest with Frodo. We reveal Snaga Scouts. We made a single progress. Snaga Scouts will engage us. Okay, so Snaga Scouts is going to attack for one. Okay, so we can't defend with Frodo. I kept uh, Ranger Vithilian back. I probably should have kept Frodo back, but uh, we'll just defend this Snaga Scout. So I do not want to lose my Ranger Vithilian. Well, I do have Hasty Stroke, so let's defend with Ranger Vithilian against Snaga Scouts. If the players have not yet crossed the Anduin, return any current active location to the staging area, and Morgul Doing becomes the active location. All right, so that's there. So Ranger Vithilian successfully blocked Snaga Scouts. All right, and then uh, Uruk Vanguard is going to attack for two, and we'll block that with um, with Gandalf. Okay, so now Gimli will attack and destroy Uruk Vanguard, and Eowyn will attack and put one damage on Snaga Scouts. Okay, refresh the end of the round, Gandalf is discarded from play. I think there's two Gandalfs in our discard now. Yeah. So the next Gandalf we'll have to treat as precious, this last one. Okay, there we go. We finally have Song of Kings. Let's get going here. We'll put a resource, or play resource from Eowyn's pool to put Song of Kings on Frodo and play Steward of Gondor. We haven't even drawn into a Galadrim's Greeting, which we will soon. Let's play a Ancient Mathem onto Pelennor Fields because it's about to be cleared. We can attach this to a, lo to a location when it's explored. Draw three cards if you're the first player. Okay, if I need to, I can play a Feint, so I need to remember that. I already have a Ranger of Athelion. My threat's not going to... We're not going to threat out, so I'm going to leave Ganoff in, play in my hand, and I can cancel... A cutoff if needed with test of will. So 
I'd like to clear Mogul doing. Let's see. Uh, we're going to quest with Northern Tracker for sure. And when we do, that clears. And I, I don't want to draw the cards yet because it might in influence what I quest with. So Because they, they all commit uh, simultaneously. Uh, it says Morgul doing when a character commits to a quest, deal one damage to that character. So I will quest with Eowyn. And she's going to be damaged. Just worried that if, if I don't complete the quest, then... Uh, yeah, let's just do that. So she'll be damaged, and so will Northern Tracker. And if I need to, I can pitch a card. I should be okay. Okay, we're going to draw three cards. That goes to the victory display. Draw three cards because of Ancient Madam. All right, sneak attacks. That's good. We reveal Emin Arnon Overlook. It says the first scout enemy revealed from the encounter deck each round gains Surge and Doom 2. Okay, so we made three progress. We did clear Morgul doing. We'll travel to Emin Arnon Overlook. Snaga Scouts will attack for one, and I'll defend with Frodo. If the players have not yet crossed Yanduin, return any current active location to the staging area, and Morgul Doing becomes the active location. Okay, so Snaga Scouts is successfully blocked by Frodo. Gimli attacks and kills Snaga Scouts. Refresh next round. Okay, Steward. So here's where, you know, Bayorn's going to come into play pretty quickly here. Um, I can't believe we don't have a Citadel play yet. All right, I could sneak attack, but I'd rather hang on to my sneak attacks, I think. Let's bring Ganoff into play and draw three cards. We'll attach this Born Aloft to him. Remember, this is our last Gandalf, so we want to protect him. And we're going to play a Citadel Plate on the Gimli, which gives him plus four hit points, so he is at nine hit points. So now we could take an Undefended and start boosting his attack even more. Okay, so we want to clear Morgul Doing, and I want to use Gandalf to do that, because he can take that damage, no big deal. Uh, and so... Also, Frodo will take that and turn it into threat. And I'll go ahead and send Ranger of Athelion as well. No, I won't. I timed out. Let's go back. Sorry about that. I hate when that happens. Okay, going back to where we were. Load that up. Private. Okay, so here we were at the beginning of the round, and I think what we did was we played one, two, three, four, five. We played Gandalf, drew three cards. Yeah, that's what we did. And then <clears throat> we played Citadel Plate. We're at nine hit points. And I think that was, oh yeah, then we put uh, born aloft onto Gandalf. So I have three resources here with Frodo. I can play a sneak attack. I can, or a test of will. I can play a hasty stroke. So we're good. Nothing should really be a problem. Okay, I'll quest with Gandalf. He's damaged, and I'll quest with Frodo. He's damaged, but we'll turn it into threat. And I will go ahead and quest with Northern Tracker and put a damage on him that puts a progress on M and R and Overlook. We reveal cut off Dune 1. And each player must discard all ally cards from his hand if able. We'll do that. No, we don't want to actually. Because that's our single copy of Fairmere. We'll cancel that with Tests of Will. We made five progress. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. 
travel to MNR and Overlook. And just, we need to remember that the next scout enemy reveal gets Surge and Doom 2. We want to clear that pretty quickly. Okay, refresh into the round. Of course, during resource action phase, we discard Born Aloft, and Ganoff comes back to our hand. <clears throat> next round. Okay, I think we're good now. Our threat's pretty high, but we're going to start lowering it here. Where in the world is Galadrim's Greetings? All three. Okay, we've done all of our Born Aloft, so now we have sneak attacks that we can use. We probably should grab uh, using Dwarven Tomb. Let's grab a Test of Will, because we don't want Cutoff to mean that, you know, Ganoff leaves play. That seems good, because it's our last Gandalf. I mean, we could sneak attack Gandalf in, and that way he's... Let me go back. Probably good to start lowering my threat. So I'm going to sneak attack Gandalf in. That's what I'll do. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and play Northern Tracker. What am I doing? I need to sneak attack Gandalf in and lower my threat by five. I think we could probably move on past Beyond Expectations now. Let's do it. Let's quest with Gandalf and Eowyn and Frodo. I wouldn't mind turtling just a bit more. Let's reveal, okay, Ranger of Athelion. We have our second copy committed to the quest, exhausted. We reveal Ruins of Osgiliath. If we have not crossed the Anduin, Ruins of Osgiliath gets plus three. So we made six progress. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we didn't clear beyond expectations. I'll take it. We'll travel here to Ruins of Osgiliath. Gandalf comes back to our hand at the end of questing, obviously. Okay, refresh. Next round. Steward of Gondor. We have a test of will. No, we don't have a test of will. So what I did last round was I didn't worry about test of will. And I don't know why I didn't, I guess, because I would have had to lose. If that cutoff had come out, I would have I would have lost Faramir. And I don't need all three Northern Trackers, so I'd probably be okay to not have but just one. But at this point, it's probably good. We don't want to lose Gandalf, I guess, uh, we because there's an, another sneak attack, and then there's one more Gandalf to use. I'd like to have both of them. So if Cutoff comes out, he needs to be in play. Let's grab with Dwarven Tomb a Test of Will like we talked about doing anyway. So I don't want to waste that sneak attack, and I don't want to waste the Gandalf. Let's go ahead and go one, two, three, four. We'll put Northern Tracker into play. And I've got Test of Will to protect Gandalf. We'll quest with Eowyn. Just Eowyn. I wouldn't mind not progressing. In fact, yeah, I'll just quest with Frodo. No, with one Ranger of Athelion. And we reveal Wayne Riders, so no progress made. Wayne Riders engages us. He's attacking for three. Any damage is going to result in an increase in threat. This is where I wish I kind of could play Bayorn. But what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just play Quick Strike and attack and kill Wayne Riders before he can even attack me. All right, this is the definition of turtling here. This is fun. But this is not boring turtling. This is like really strategic turtling. I like this. All right, so I still have test of will. I think I'm going to save my resources in case I need. It would be good to get Bayorn into play finally. I could play Northern Tracker, but I'd play test of will if cutoff comes out anyway. So I think if like another enemy came out that I wish I could defend against, it might be good to have Bayorn. So yeah, I will just quest with Eowyn. 
no, just with uh, range of Athelion again. Okay, we reveal Massing Atos Giliath is going to surge, and until the end of the phase, each card revealed by the encounter deck gains Doomed 1. So this card's going to have Doomed 1. It is Uruk Vanguard. Our threat goes up by 1. Okay, so Uruk Vanguard comes in and engages us. We've not crossed the Anduin, so he doesn't get that boost. Now let's play Stand and Fight. Playing six spirit resources to bring Bayorn into play. Stand and Fight says, choose an ally with a printed cost of X. So the value of this card is X. Put that, pal put that ally into play under your control. So here we have, finally, Bayorn. We'll put him over here because he is hero status. Okay, so we're just going to defend this uh, attack from... Well, there is a shadow that removes the defending character from... We wouldn't threat out because it's just two. Okay, we'll defend with Bayorn. And so Bayorn defends. So now moving forward, we have a great defender that doesn't raise our threat. So once we get our Galadrim's Greetings, we are set. Okay, let's attack for six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, we, we kill Orc Vanguard. Refresh, next round. Okay, there's our first Galadrim's Greeting. So in fact, it probably is a good idea to go ahead and play Galadrim's Greeting. One, two, three. We'll play one and lower our threat by six. I'm just going to keep turtling on this stage a little bit. Just get everything set up uh, optimally. It's not something you always get to do in this quest. Okay, so I'll just quest with uh, another Ranger of Athelion. And I'm going to reveal Snaga Scouts. I made one progress on Ruins of Osgiliath. Didn't clear it. Snaga Scouts will engage us. And I'm going to defend with Bayorn. One against three. Deal two damage to the defending character. And so that goes on Bayorn. He can take it. And now we destroy Snaga Scouts. Okay, refresh. Next round. Okay, there's our... I think we just have two copies of Sneak Attack. Yeah. So it might be better to not really use Sneak Attack and Gandalf for lowering our threat anymore. Wait a minute, I need to be boosting uh, Gimli's attack, but once we get the next set of the plate on it, we'll be, we'll be able to. Okay, one, two, three, four. Let's put out our third Northern Tracker. I'm going to put them down here. Things are getting crowded. What's in our discard pile? Okay. So we have just Faramir and Gandalf that we would need to protect from cut off. I think we can probably move on, right? Let's just quest with Ranger Vathilian. We reveal Wayne Rider Ch Captain. When revealed, move the top scout enemy from the encounter discard pile to the staging area. Let's go ahead and do that rather than canceling it because I kind of want to get Gimli's attack up anyway. Okay, so both of these enemies will engage us. And there's no shadow card dealt to Wolves from Mordor. That's cool. So we'll take the Wolves from Mordor attack undefended for sure. Putting 1, 2, 3, 4 damage on Gimli and boosting him to 10 attack. And now uh, Wayne Rider Captain's going to attack for 3. We'll defend with Bayorn. 3 against 3. So he blocked that. And now Gimli can destroy Wayne Rider Captain. And then... These two northern trackers can destroy wolves from Mordor. All right, it is time to move on. We're just enjoying manhandling the quest at this point. That's a good feeling, I think. Manhandling um, this quest is not a bad... It's pretty cool to be able to do that. Okay, we're going to sneak attack Gandalf in, I think. Let me see. One, two, three. Let's play a Galadrim's Greedy and lower threat by six. And now we'll sneak attack Gandalf in and lower a threat by five. We'll quest with various and sundry. We reveal Wolves from Mordor. We made 11 progress, one and 10. So we cleared stage 1A. Cool. 
Through the ruins, the outriders and scouts of the army have cut you off from the bridge. You desperately seek the likeliest place to cross the Anduin. Players cannot travel to West Bank locations. That's still true. And now this is why you want a turtle at stage one, partly because you're waiting to get Ranger of Athelion, but also each player cannot play or put into play more than one card from his hand each round. Gandalf comes back to our hand at the end of questing, and now Wolves from Mordor engages us. Our threat's down to 32, so we're not at all worried about threat anymore. Um, so we will defend with Bayorn. Four against three. So Bayorn takes a third damage. What a great ally. Okay, Gandalf, just, uh, not Gandalf, Gimli destroys Wolves from Mordor next round. Okay, so this is our last play of Gandalf. We've made complete, you know, all three ba born a loss. Uh, I don't know, we might have discarded the Gandalf somewhere along the way. I don't know for sure, but... Okay, we're at round 18. Okay, I still don't have Citadel Plate. Uh, I can only play one card. Which card should it be? Because of this uh, text. Maybe I should draw three cards. And just bring Gandalf into play. Yeah, might as well. One, two, three, four, five. We're bringing in Gandalf for the last time, and we're drawing three cards. And we will quest and easily pass this stage. Um, that's 10 progress. I think we're good. We reveal Captured Watchtower. If the players have crossed the Anduin, Captured Watchtower gains plus three. We have not crossed the Anduin. And it says we cannot travel to West Bank locations at this point, but we make nine progress and clear the stage. Moving on to 3A, Anduin Crossing. The cold waters of the Anduin River rush before you, but the current is weaker here, and you have to cross. The Outriders and Van of the Dark Lord's army are closing fast behind, and their archers will make the attempted crossing even more dangerous. The bravest members of your band turn back to distract the oncoming horde, so that the rest of you might escape. All right, so this is a crazy stage, just like the last one. There's this negative stuff on it. Progress tokens from card effects cannot be placed on this quest card or the active location, so you couldn't... Uh, you know, Northern Track or the active location, well, you can anyway, but you couldn't s Snowborn Scout the active location. You couldn't attack with Legolas and put progress on this quest. Players cannot travel to East Bank or West Bank locations. So while we're here, locations stay where they are. And this is where the Ranger of Athelion comes into play. In order to commit characters to the quest, a player must first choose a hero or one Ranger of Athelion card he controls. Discard each chosen card from play. So if I didn't have a Ranger of Athelion to even commit characters, I have to discard a hero. So totally brutal. And so what I've discovered is initially I had a deck that kind of rushed the quest, but it was contingent on me getting Ranger of Athelion. Sometimes that didn't work. So that's where the turtling strategy is where I've sort of landed. Okay, can't travel to any location, so... We're just going to end the round here. Refresh and Gandalf, you did well, sir. Next round. So now it's just a question of winning the quest. Um, let's go ahead and play Faramir using Frodo's resources. And I think we have all of our allies in play. Gandalfs are gone. Yeah, Faramir, Bayorn. So all allies are in play at this point. So I just need Citadel Plate, I think, more than anything. Okay, so at the beginning of questing, we have to discard a Ranger of Athelia, and it goes to the discard pile of the encounter set. Uh, we discard it, and now we can commit characters, which we will deal, well, we'll commit Frodo as well. That's plenty. Okay, we reveal Wayne Riders who made five progress. One, two, three, four, five. We cleared Anduin Crossing. Last stage, race to Minas Tirith. You made it across the Anduin and are leaving Osgiliath when a fell shriek splits the air. 
You begin the race across the Pelennor fields to the safety of Minas Tirith, but a new enemy follows behind. Winterveld, add the Witch King to the staging area. Um, players have now crossed the Anduin, so any effect like this one right here, if the players have crossed the Anduin, captured Watchtower gains plus three, so that's true. Uh, players cannot travel to East Bank locations, but we can travel to West Bank locations. If the players defeat the stage, they've won the game. Okay, so during travel, I'll travel here. And now our threat is at 34, so it's underneath both of these. Players cannot play attachments on the Witch King. While the Witch King is in the staging area, each character gets minus one willpower. After the Witch King attacks, he returns to the staging area unless the players raise their threat by three. Let's just have a little bit of fun. We'll optionally engage Wayne Riders. We'll take an undefended attack. Well, I hate undefended with Rain, Wayne Riders. It means my threat goes up by three. Yeah, who cares? Okay, Wayne Riders will attack. Oh, wait, no, I don't have two Citadel plates. So we'll just optionally engage Wayne Riders and defend with Bayorn. He gets his shadow. Defending player must discard one ally card from his hand or attack an enemy gets plus three. Uh, one ally. Let's discard this duplicate Bayorn. So Bayorn successfully blocks the attack. Gimli destroys utterly the Wayne Rider. Okay, refresh. Next round. Would you hate me if I had a little fun and kind of <laughs> kind of optimize everything here? Okay, one, two, three. We're going to play... This Galadrim's greeting and lower threat by six. We probably could just quest past the. We don't have to defeat the Witch King to to win, but I'd like to. So, we have tests of wills. We have hasty strokes. We have the ability to keep lowering our threat with Galadrim's greetings if we want to. Um, let's go ahead and put a. Unexpected Courage on the Gimli. Okay, we'll quest with Eowyn and with <clears throat> Frodo. And with Ranger of Athelion. And we reveal Snaga Scouts. We made one progress on Captured Watchtower. Okay, during the engagement phase, encounter phase, obviously Snaga Scouts comes down because of its forced effect. We'll optionally engage Witch King. And now I'm going to play a quick strike. Uh, Gimli's attacking for 10 here. No, I can't do this. Never mind. So whenever the Witch King wants to attack, I just play faint. And he can't attack, and so his forced effect. Oh, wait, I forgot also that Witch King, uh, when he's in the staging area, each character gets minus one, so I'll just exhaust Faramir to offset that. So I made the one progress like I talked about. Okay, so Witch King was just denied the opportunity to attack us, and so his force effect doesn't fire. Snaga Scout will attack for one. Let's put that. Let's just do it undefended. If this, if this attack is undefended, the attacking enemy gets plus two if it's a scout. Let's just play a hasty stroke. <clears throat> now we attack for 10, 12, 14, 16. And 19. So we destroyed. Did I even need to do that? 19 minus. So 10, 13, 15, 10, 13, 15, 17. Okay, that kills the Witch King. And he's discarded from play. And he doesn't go to the victory display. He's just discarded. And now Northern Tracker can kill the Snaga Scout. I just wanted that moral victory. We've destroyed the quest. Fun, fun, fun. Okay. Let's put this Citadel plate on the Gimli. Get him to his maximum hit points. He's at 13. And let's play a Dwarven Tomb to grab a Galadrim's Greeting out of the discard pile. And play it. One, two, three. We lower our threat by six. Just moral victories here. Did I discard my feint? Yeah. 
Okay, we're going to quest with Gimli, Redium, uh, Aowen, Frodo. I won't quest with Bayorn just in case I need. Well, I'll quest with Bayorn too. Everybody's questing. We reveal Captured Watchtower. If the players have crossed the Anduin, Captured Watchtower gains plus three. So we made 10 progress, but we'll exhaust Faramir for a boost of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's 18, so 17 on the current quest, and we won. That was really cool. So that's it. That's the game. Uh, I think we saw everything. Uh, Ancient Mathem, I mean, the card draw comes in with Gandalf and Ancient Mathem and so the thing that can happen to you is early on if you just get, like, let's just say that, that you constantly reveal wolves from Mordor, you're going to die. Uh, we don't have any cheap allies. But I find that it's not really worth having chumps because of the wolves from Mordor. Um, there's just a lot of things about this quest that where, well, I'll do this, but then the encounter deck counteracts you. This is what I like about this game. This is the kind of quest I want to play where I'm forced to you know, to, to optimize it, I have to make some sacrifices. So I sacrifice having low cost chumps, uh, basically. And, uh, anyway, everything worked out. It can not work out. It can happen, but, uh, well, that's it. That's the quest. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join me next time in juxtaposition. Hills of Immanuel is next and it is the easiest quest in the game. So we'll enjoy taking our time on the next one, having an easy time. I should say, have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.